Since I started uploading videos to YouTube and did videos based on black magic design, I've noticed one thing people cannot agree. So in this video, we're going to find out what everybody really wants from the next black magic cinema camera. Let's go. Let's talk about how we got here. Around a month or so ago, I did a video about a rumor that broke out regarding Blackmagic Design's next cinema camera. This rumor was that Blackmagic are joining the Elm Out Alliance. And more importantly, their next cinema camera will have an option to purchase with an L mount. Now, in my video reacting to this rumor, what happened in the comment section below was really interesting and actually surprised me. It was not the fact that no one could understand my accent, as believe it or not, if I drive 20 miles in either direction from my own city, no one could understand my accent. What it was is the fact that nobody could agree whether this was good news or bad news. And more interestingly, the community started sharing with me on the video what they want in their next Blackmagic cinema camera. And it was such a wide range of things this really got me thinking so what i did is i also did a post on the community section of my youtube channel and i asked people what three things they would want in their next black magic cinema camera and again just as expected we got really different answers so what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to find out what people really want by going through all your comments giving my thoughts on them and more importantly counting to see which is the most common top three answers my smartwatch is pinging off telling me that i have a pre-production code five minutes on this computer here so let me quickly get through this call and then we'll get back to the video that's the meeting done let's get back to the video i've honestly not been through and counted what i think the most free requested features will be from everyone my three guesses are going to be number one a new body design new shape camera the box the shape camera whatever people want and number two is going to be better low light performance i would guess and number three i'm torn on this one but i'm going to go for autofocus or maybe less rolling shutter i'll stick with autofocus as they are my guesses so one smaller body two better low light and free autofocus. Let's start off the counting with myself. I'm going to put in what I think my three most beneficial features would be in the next Blackmagic camera. Number one is uh, I would like something in between a uh, pocket and the Nursa in the middle. I really love the shape of the FX6, so something around that. I don't necessarily want a box camera like a lot of people request, but I would like the same size of a pocket, but with the shape of an Ursa. So let's go 1.2 new body shape. My number two most wanted feature would be less rolling shutter. It's not that I think that the Ursa at the minute is bad, as I would be totally fine with that. It's just the pocket is not good enough for my needs. So if we're going to make something smaller in body design, I would like to keep the kind of seven milliseconds, eight milliseconds, Right in line with that in Alexa up there. I'm not interested in global shutter because that just affects frame rates way too much. Something smaller but with the same rolling shutter as what the Ursa currently has. My third choice would be IBIS. I know people say there is an issue when using internal ND filters and IBIS, but if Blackmagic could solve this, that would be unreal. I definitely don't want to lose the built-in ND filters. That would be like no go for me if Blackmagic took them out. So I would like the new camera to have an option with built-in NDs and IBIS. Might be asking for a lot there, but what's the point of bringing out new cameras if they don't have groundbreaking features? That's one point for new body design, one point for less rolling shot on, and one point for IBIS. Let's get into the comments and keep this going. So first reply I got was from Waveland, it was a massive support of the channel. His reply was, of course, I'm curious about the LMAT rumor, which seems plausible in some ways, but which would be a big departure from the EF glass. Regardless, I'm looking for something more compact in design. That's a point for new body design. We have a short flange distance mount, autofocus, IBIS, and virtual production ready. He also said, but probably top of my list would be CF Express Type B Media. I don't know how they could miss that feature change. Good point. Something I've not thought about, but that is an excellent point upgraded more future-proof media as their cameras are still on the cf 2.0 what is kind of getting a bit outdated now although still crazy expensive there is more than three in here but i will mark down he said his number one feature will be upgraded media so that's a point for that he also mentioned a new body design that's a point for that and then he also mentioned ibis so we'll chuck another point on for that the next reply was for i am kofi ampa uh they should just change the shape of the pocket series that's another vote for our new body design. Moving on, the next comment was Andy Evans 6835 
The thing there that puts me off the 6K is some people report bad quality issues, i.e. Savage Filmmakers, they must have a video, I've not checked it out, I'll go look. As opposed to the Acer which seems very robust and reliable, but possibly too big for a one man filmmaker, totally agree with that. Therefore I'd like a camera that is halfway between the two models in terms of size, but retaining all the specs of the Pocket 6K adding to that weather ceiling and ibis okay that sounds good so we've got another new design we've also got ibis and weather ceiling let's add points on for those next reply was from tim but two i'd really love for them to add lens profiles to the cameras um, that way when you put manual lenses on that doesn't communicate with the camera electronically you can load up the lens profile then that travels with a b-roll file to resolve for you to be able to use in virtual cameras i guess there's another mention towards being virtual production ready i guess there's something red or really successful at as most virtual productions i've been here have always used like red cameras with their global shutters and they must have these sort of features i'm no expert on virtual production this would travel with a b-roll file to resolve for you to be able to use the virtual camera and lens infusion plus do lens correction and such i'd love black magic to add more ports to the ursa body mainly a limo port up front for lens motors does it not already have one Nah, it has the, the B4 mount port, right? Yeah, that should be changed to a Limo port, like what Ari do. Yeah, 100%, that's a great, great idea. I would love for it to work with a Blackmagic lens control system, like the Ari High 5 and WCU4. Those are like Hollywood industry standard follow focuses. But Blackmagic Designs version of one of those, that'd be cool. I wouldn't hate that. The additional ports on the back could include a second SDI output for wireless feed monitoring. See, this is an issue I have with the ERSA. When I have the viewfinder running through SDI and also I have a monitor on top using the back SDI, to get my wireless feed off to a client or a director, I have to loop through my monitor. So an extra SDI port would go a long way and I totally agree with what he's saying here. He also goes on to say, so adds additional overlay options for their output so they can have the real uh, information on their display while camera team can have the information important to them. Yeah, I love all that. I think there is a slight version of that already in the camera, but I'd love them to push it even further. So a Blackmagic wireless video system, one transmitter, two feeds. Yep, love all that. One for the DOP AC. I'd like to be able to mount the viewfinder further back or even on the right side of the camera in tight corners and positions on the right side. I've had a ton of suggestions on the Blackmagic forum over the years, including wireless video assist with camera controls from their touchscreen interface. Come on now. Come on, Blackmagic. Let's stop playing games. That's what we need. Pair of video assist with the camera and get Bluetooth control, Wi-Fi, built-in wireless video receiver. Is it like Zcam or something who do the built-in wireless video receiver? And also Red do like a mount on pack at the back. My list can go on, so many requests, but for DZO Film, I've been on them for three years now and getting, about getting eye technology into their PL lenses, so definitely need lenses to embrace the data. Good point. If we're going to be using cinema glass on virtual productions, also the lens have to play a part in this. They'll have to send information also, I guess. So we're not always manually loading that up. But to break that down, he would like an improved ergonomical body. He would like more ports on the camera and a built-in wireless video feed. We'll take those three and mark them down as points. But great comment. Love some really creative ideas in there that I absolutely love. Next comment from the J underscore G. And that says, global slash near global shutter or reduced rolling shutter an l mount slash panasonic alliance it's the first one for it i mean we have had the mention of wanting a new mount with shorter flange distance and here's another one for that and codex beyond b-row are my biggest curiosity and maybe update a body type come on man b is great for this one i will write down in the order that he wrote them i will go for let a reduced rolling shutter a uh, new lens mount, L mount, and a better codec beyond B row. Next comment is from Tiago Lima DOP. Reduce rolling shutter, L mount, and CF Express B. Dual gain output, DGO, is that? 6K 96, better frame rates, Gen 5, color, uh, three second pre record, and open gate full frame. That's an awful lot. I can tell you right now, you probably won't get all of them. But I'll take the first three in the order you wrote it as they're probably the most important. What are Rolling Shutter, L Mount, and CF Express B. And the next comment is from Nardamuchu. 
rolling shutter and autofocus and any chance we can get a black magic design mini cine smaller form factor cinema for vlogging and other personal use would be killer throw in ibis it's an instant buy that's very close to my free to be fair on him i would absolutely love that as well um so i will mark down again in the order that he wrote him rolling shutter Autofocus and new body design. Uh, he also wrote Ibis, but that was his fourth mention, so I will go for those three. Right, so that was all the replies wrote on my post. To break this up a bit, I'm gonna ask Will, who you've seen in the videos before from this production company. He's been using Blackmagic cameras for 10, 15 years, and he's one of our main camera ops, so let's find out what he wants. I will jump on a Zoom call with him now, if he lets me. I've not even asked him yet, but I'm sure he'll say yeah. So, let's ask Will and find out what he wants from a new Blackmagic camera. What we're doing, Will, is I'm trying to figure out what the most requested free features are for the next Blackmagic cinema camera. So I thought I would come at you as you've got loads of experience using a Blackmagic camera, I've been using one for years, and do a lot of camera operating. So if you could only pick three, no more than three, features to be added to the next Blackmagic cinema camera, let's say it keeps all its features now and you can change three things, what would they be? So the first one would be in-body stabilization, and I'm talking about the pocket. Uh, yeah. I feel like when I'm using the pocket, sometimes you get them, you get like them little camera jitters. You know when you're doing handheld shots. Yep. So I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to get rid of that. Number one would be in-body stabilization, because when you're using the smaller body on the pocket, you feel it looks like a small body. Okay. So what would your second choice be? My second choice would be uh, a different body design. I feel like the pocket is quite bulky and quite awkward. It's quite awkward to use to be honest at times. Um, I feel like a, a shape more like the FX6 would be nice. Um, you know, it's quite small and compact, but the actual shape of it is better for like run and gun style shooting. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's the second one. If you was to pick a new body design, would you kind of replace the pocket series? Would you replace the Ursa? Or would you merge them into one camera? Or would you keep the Ursa? and bring out like a new line of replacements for the pocket like where would this new body design yeah. go no yeah that's interesting i feel like i'd still I'd, I'd still want to use the ursa just because i feel like um you know this has got more imports and outports and whatnot and um, you know so it's, it's it's bigger and bulkier for a reason um so i think the ursa still has its place but the f but the fx6 six style body uh, be nice in the pocket just for you know the, the smaller run and gun shoots um, uh, I guess you don't need to be plugging in wireless feeds and stuff. You know, it's just you and a camera sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I'd go for. Makes total sense. Um, and on to the third thing you would pick. So the third thing would be better battery life. And I'm talking about the pocket again. Um, there's times where I want to use the internal batteries and I can't because they last about 20, 30 minutes and it's just not long enough, is it? So um, yeah, I'd like, uh, batteries to be honest yeah so you're saying like internal batteries kind of the same way the fx6 does it where some people put a v-mount on the back but also the internal battery can go for like an hour or two yeah 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 i mean like when i'm shooting in tight spaces um i want to shoot for longer in tight spaces and i can't because the battery's just dying you know so yeah yeah of course yeah. so that was in body stabilization new more kind of ergonomical smaller easier to use but lightweight body design yeah and better internal battery life for when you're not rigging it out to be a big setup. So now let's have a little recap of the scores now that we've read through all the comments from the community posts I did. The new body design won. Tied in second place was less rolling shutter and in-body image stabilization. Then with two points is new lens mount. That would be people pretty much wanting the L mount or the short flange distance, maybe the Canon mount. And then all with one point would be build quality improvements like weather sealing, more ports like SDI ports and Limo ports for lens motors. Built-in wireless feed, a new codec, and better internal battery life. These are all great additions, and I'm sure if Blackmagic could put all of them into the next camera, they'd be in there. This was really interesting for me to do, as I definitely thought that full frame would be on there, massively high up. I guess people don't really care about full frame. If you remember my choices in the intro, I thought Pete, a lot more people would want low light, but it just goes to show that I guess people who buy and use Blackmagic cameras tend to light their shoots or tend to understand how like cinematography works in terms of lighting. 
because I hate those shots where people just get like A7S 2s and 3s and wind the ISO so high that the sky looks like a luminous blue. So this video is different to my normal type, but I absolutely love talking to people, other filmmakers. Uh, one of my main things is just finding other people who are passionate about camera gear and having conversations with them. And I wanted to kind of push this video down that direction. It's amazed me and I actually can't believe how much I am learning from YouTube instead of the other way around. My original thought was like, I will make YouTube videos to teach people stuff, but it's almost like the YouTube community is teaching me more than I'm teaching them. So I'm forever thankful for that. If this video is good and people respond to it well, I'm definitely gonna do more. So let me know below if that's the case. And to conclude what I think about the next Blackmagic camera, I guess my conclusion would be that whatever Blackmagic's next camera ends up being, it can't please everyone. It's gonna be some that hate it. It's going to be some that love it. And they have a very, very difficult job in their hands that I'm so happy is not my responsibility. <laughs> I'm sure what Blackmagic are already fully aware of being a billion dollar plus company. But what I would do if I was in their shoes, I would just pick a direction and run with it. As it's better to please a group of people than just disappoint everyone and try to get some kind of do it all camera. And I'm sure that's exactly what Blackmagic will do. If you want to find out more information about the rumors on Blackmagic's next camera, click here.